an overnight flight to Hong Kong. The cabin is dark and most of the passengers are sleeping. That's wild. Suddenly the plane starts Cloud. making some strange maneuvers. Panda. It turns Pandas 90 degrees and flies on its side. <laughs> then you're swimming with sharks you get hit by a car? What the fuck? Turns straight down, pressing Chance you back with zero. more than 4 Gs of force. Yes, movie night tonight, After making some recovery, you're now in an unreal, weightless freefall. If you didn't know better, you'd think a child was wildly playing with the controls. Unfortunately, in this case, you wouldn't be wrong. This is the fatal breakdown of the Aeroflot Flight 593 crash. In March of 1994, Aeroflot Flight 593 was traveling from Moscow to Hong Kong with a fairly routine flight plan. That's crazy. The three pilots would be rotating turns at the helm since this was a long would flight. Would be at peace? I would be like, damn, I should have gotten sober. The captain of the group would finish his shift and move to the cabin for some rest. The relief pilot, Yaroslav Kudrinsky, took over as captain. His co-pilot was First Officer Igor Piskaryov. The two pilots had a combined 15,000 uh, hours of flight Rabbit time, RX. including 1,400 hours in the A310. The Airbus A310-300 was a brand new advanced aircraft in the Aeroflot fleet. These pilots had the majority of their hours on Russian-made planes, which oh, had yeah, slightly I mean, different like standards on warnings and limits different. for operation. These subtle differences may have been the tragic difference between a miraculous recovery and a fiery crash. In addition to the Peace pilot and co-pilot, there was actually a third pilot in the cockpit that night. Vladimir Makarov was another Aeroflot pilot riding as a passenger on this flight. As a courtesy, he no, was allowed to sit play. in one of the jump seats behind I'm literally, I'm literally flying in like seven days, so... ...the pilots. As the quiet of the overnight flight set in, the captain decided to allow a couple visitors into the cockpit. This unusual event was actually an exciting circumstance for Captain Kudrinsky. His children were on this flight since they were scheduled to have a short vacation together in Hong Kong. The plane was flying on autopilot, the course was set, and this was the uneventful portion of the flight for pilots. Damn. His 15-year-old son Eldar and 13-year-old daughter Yana entered the cockpit at 12.40 a.m. The initial banter revealed a proud father Never showing his complicated him. job as a commercial captain to his I impressed children. After just a few minutes, up, Captain Jim? Kudrinsky steps out of his seat and Yana takes his place. The moment he removed his harness to stand, he should have transferred control of the plane to the co-pilot. At this point, Igor Piskarov had his seat pushed back in a relaxed position without really being able to reach all of the flight controls. If the captain had transferred control formally, Piskaryov would have moved his seat forward and placed his hands on the control wheel. It was a what? seemingly small error, but as we'll see, small Maybe errors can add up plans. to be a huge mistake. As the captain moved out, he moved Yana yes. in. It was a harmless exchange, considering the plane was on autopilot and it would allow her to get a closer look. She spent a few minutes looking around, asking a few questions and touching the control wheel. Her father suggested that she turn the wheel to the left and fly the plane. She did as he asked and the plane quickly turned to the left. As a what child, I'm sure the magical feeling of controlling this huge plane was thrilling, but Captain Kudrinsky had performed a little magic of his own. He quickly turned a knob to direct the plane to the left. He was following a procedure that he had performed hundreds of times. While the plane was in fact on autopilot, there are ways for the pilots to take control of one function or another. The captain pulled out the heading select knob. Dude, and I'd be so pissed if my pilot was like, let me show you this, cutie, my little daughter. Like, You're playing with my life! You're playing with my life, bro! Fuck these pilots. Like, nah. Directed the plane to the left by 15 degrees. In simple terms, this meant that the wings would essentially dip 15 degrees on the left side, causing the plane to roll towards the left. In this case, For the bro. autopilot was still controlling the speed and altitude. It also still had the programmed route waiting to be resumed. As soon as the captain pushed the knob back in, the autopilot would resume the programmed heading and continue on with the planned flight. Oh, for real. A pilot might use this function to direct the plane around a storm, then resume the autopilot course once it's passed. That's crazy. After Yana had experienced turning the controls Do for a moment, this is she was ready to get out of the seat and turn to get up. The captain quickly spoke up. Getting in and out of the seat can be a risky task if you don't know what you're doing. There are rudder pedals on the ground and numerous buttons and switches near knees and elbows that a child might not notice. Captain Kudrinsky told her to go slow and slide out carefully. So far, it seems that the show and tell was going as expected. 
and mostly all attention and care was being directed to cockpit safety. The autopilot was in so full control, careless. and all five individuals in the cockpit were relaxed and enjoying this break from the routine. At 12.51, it was Eldar's turn to take a closer look. He slid into the captain's seat and started eyeing the various buttons and readouts. Nah, bro. After a few minutes at 12.54, Eldar asked if he could turn the plane, and the captain repeated the maneuver. The guest pilot Makarov suggested that Captain Kudrensky adjust the main screen to show the horizon visual, so Eldar could see the angle on the screen. Oh my God, the time was 12.55, and the it's heading select knob was pushed back in. The autopilot was fully engaged as far as anyone could tell. At this point, Yana started asking her father if she could head back to her seat in the cabin. They were discussing that she should be quiet and not disturb the first-class passengers, when Eldar spoke up with a question. The title of the bed. Family time that killed 75 passengers. This called the attention of all three pilots to the instruments. They were all a bit confused by the turn. No one had been fully engaged with the flight controls for several minutes. So reorienting themselves to what was going on took precious seconds. When a plane is required to circle an airport for landing, called a holding pattern, Jeez. it often enters what they call a zone. The flight would follow a prescribed circling pattern that was like an oval shape around the airport. On the instrument display, the previous straight line would have curved around in a U-shape, showing the full turn that was planned in the programmed course. This zone pattern was the only explanation for why the autopilot would be taking them around in a circle. The confusing part was that they were nowhere near an airport, so why the holding pattern? Over the 20 seconds they spent looking and discussing, the what plane the had fuck? banked more than 45 degrees. This exceeds the maneuvering capabilities of the autopilot, and the plane attempted to correct the speed and altitude in regards to this angled position. The changes were instantly alarming, and the pilots moved to resolve the issue. It's tipping. Oh my god, bro. At this point it was twelve fifty six. Alarms were going off regarding the altitude and bank angle. The autopilot was now fully disengaged. The plane was banking at an incredible 90 say. degrees, while the oh nose was my God. pointing down at a 50 degree angle. This means they were barreling towards the ground at nearly 500 miles per hour. The direction and speed of the plane was now generating 4.6 Gs of force, which exceeds the structural limitations of the plane. This force kept Piskaryov from being able to pull forward and fully engage the controls. It also kept Eldar and Captain Kudrensky from being able to change places. That's crazy. That's so fucking nuts. During this time, the co-pilot was trying to slow the plane by reducing attack. thrust and pulling up on the nose, but he greatly overcorrected the situation. These oh, actions, no. along with an accidental rudder pedal push by Eldar when switching places, caused a stall and then a nightmarish spiral down out of control. Just moments before, the passengers would have been pressed into their seats while turned completely on their sides. It would have been madness to wake up to these wild Your shifts passenger. in angle, heavy G-forces, and then, in this moment, pure weightlessness the g-force reduced to zero as they fell out of the sky it was now 1257 and captain kudrensky was back in his seat oh, 
Cause he's a little fuck. A kid actually did that. Yeah. Tree fall. He was trying to show his son. That plane is going crazy. He was trying to show the sun, uh, the plane, and the sun fucked it up for everybody. So, I mean, yeah, I said don't fuck them. Imagine how scared the kid is. Bruh, I would, I would haunt that motherfucker forever if I died. The deadly there. spin was now coming under control, and Captain Kudrinsky was confident that things were going to be fine. Unfortunately, at this point, they were less than 1,000 feet above the ground, and that was just not enough. At 12.58, they crashed into the ground. The captain's final words were, So how did this happen? The plane had absolutely no failures and performed just oh as it God. was designed to do. The problem was a feature that the pilots just weren't familiar with. Oh my God. Under normal circumstances, in the Russian planes they'd mostly piloted, an alarm would sound when any part of the autopilot was disengaged. The Airbus A310 made an audible alarm when the autopilot was fully disengaged, That's crazy, but it only alerted cry. with a silent indicator light when just one of the systems was shut down. The captain was completely unaware that while Eldar was turning the control wheel, the plane started counting down to autopilot shutoff of the longitudinal roll controls. Oh so while Captain God. Kudrinsky was talking to Yana about returning to her seat, Eldar was continuing to turn the control wheel slightly. That's After crazy, 30 seconds, that the pussy. autopilot system took this turning action Fuck you, Eldar. to mean that the pilot needed to override Stupid whatever the autopilot bitch. had programmed. The pilots never heard an alarm that the autopilot was interrupted, so they continued with the belief that the autopilot must be turning the plane for a programmed reason. Yeah, damn. This misunderstanding wasted precious seconds of potential Jesus. recovery. During this time, the plane's autopilot was still controlling the speed and altitude which caused some unknown changes to angles, speed, and direction of I'm the plane dead. without the pilots registering those shifts. No. All of this one shot if Eldar's a stupid prick. ...happened in just a few minutes. Eldar asked to turn scary. the control at 1254. He asked I'm why it... on a plane in seven days, or eight days. ...turned by itself just one minute later. Right? The plane Damn. was banking hard... Damn, chat. I only got eight days. Bro, it's already almost been a month here. That's crazy. Your kid in the cockpit? I mean, yeah, it's the adult's fault, actually, you know, but it's still funny to, bl to blame that little pussy Eldar. For the next minute. Bro, that pussy. Why would you just pull one way, dipshit? It's fucking playing. You know, the fucking. I mean, the loop de loops. His name's Eldar here. Time flies when you're having fun. Is that a plane joke since it crashed? That's fucked, Kato. And by 12.56, all, all the Eldar's. pilots were aware of the dangerous conditions and were frantically trying to figure out what was happening. It was only two minutes until the flight came to a fiery end at 12.58. It's hard to say what factor was most responsible for this crash. Eldar. Was it the design that did not give the pilots an audible warning that autopilot was disengaged? Or was it the untrained teenager turning the control wheel? These combined conditions resulted in all 75 passengers on board being killed instantly on impact in a completely devastating loss of life. After this crash, Airbus made adjustments Would to their autopilot system and banking angle limits for their future oh, okay. aircraft. Well, that was mild.